What we want to look at here are the transform tools, the transform or transformation tools. There's a little group of them, uh, and there are essentially, as I'm going to show you, two ways to use them. One that I call the manual method, and the other is the dialog box method, and the advantages of each one. But there's this little group here, um, the rotation and the reflection tool, the scale and the shearing tool. And once you know how one of them works, then they all work in a similar fashion. Again, with these two different methods that I call the manual and the dialog box uh, version. First off, we can uh, get the dialog box um, where we're going to come back to. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is create just a basic shape uh, so that we have something to work with. And I'm going to use the star tool and we'll create this little star here. Okay. And um, <clears throat> then we can go up into the main menu and here we have transform. And we have the move, rotate, reflect, scale, and shear. Notice that the um, command to repeat things automatically, the transform again, the command D is up in this same area. So it's a, a part of this group. But at any rate, we'll uh, come back to this. We can get the dialog boxes from here. And um, first off, let's look at the manual method of accomplishing this. So I'm going to take um, any of the tools. Let's take the, um, I'll tell you what, let's take the rotation tool, again, from over here. And um, when we choose that tool, um, our tool on the screen is a little crosshair. And um, this is a two-step process, the manual method of transforming or changing our shapes. Okay, so the first thing I have is this little crosshair, and we're going to use this to indicate um, where um, the object, in this case, should rotate from. It can be on the object, it can be on the corner, but it doesn't even need to be on the object. Notice I'm going to put my tool right down below here, and it's going to be like we have attached a string and uh, nailed it here. And from this point, it's going to rotate. Now, as soon as I clicked my crosshair, it turned into a black arrow. And now, all I need to do is click, hold my mouse, and notice that the object rotates around. Again, I just click it anywhere. This time, I'll do it on the corner of the star. Okay. Um, and uh, I'll just click there turns into a black head arrow, and then it now rotates from around that point. Okay? So, click to anchor it, black arrow, click and drag to put the motion um, or the change into it. And that's going to work the same way for all of these tools. Let me go to a different one. I'll go to the shearing tool. It sort of italicizes things. And again, I'm going to click on the bottom corner of the object and then just pull and you can see what it does is it lays the image in this case makes it look like it's laid laid it down and so that was the uh, shearing tool all right so um, that's the manual method all of these tools this uh, work the same way so um, you click it someplace and that sort of anchors the object, if you will, and then you pull um, and perform whatever function, whether it's scaling, whether it's rotating, or whether it's shearing. The other method for utilizing these tools is what I call the dialog box, and it has some advantages um, that are unique to it. And we can get the dialog box, again, I have an object. Um, right here, <clears throat> and um, pretend that uh, this is, um, I'm doing an illustration, and pretend that this is the um, uh, eyeball of Mickey Mouse, and I want to do another one exactly, um, you know, symmetrical and opposite of this one 
object. And um, this is where the dialog box method can be very useful for using the transformation tools. So again, I select my object here. And I've got one of two ways. I can either go up under Object, Transform, and in this case, I'm going to use the Reflection Tools. I want to make a copy and flop it so that we will get the uh, other eyeball uh, for our uh, little cartoon. So I say Reflect, and you see here I get a dialog box. Okay. The other way to get the dialog box, um, we've talked about, I believe, it, with most of the tools, you can um, generally, um, either by double-clicking on the tool itself or bringing the tool over onto the page and double-clicking, one or the other is going to give you a dialog box. And there you see the exact same dialog box that we were able to um, access from up in the main menu under Object Transform. So it's the same. And uh, as always, the first thing we want to do is if there's a preview button, we want to see the preview. And there you see what will happen when we make this transformation. In this case, I'm just going to use the default um, and uh, uh, to set up our object. Well, I can either say OK and it will, in this case, flop it over to the other side or in the other direction. Or I can say make a copy. Now, um, uh, w one of the things before I go any further about the dialog box is in some cases you'll want to be very specific about the increments that you use for any of these changes. And so the dialog box lets you put in specific numbers for angles or um, enlarging or reducing or percentage so that you can be very precise about um, those numerical values, if you will. The other, as I was headed towards talking about, is I can say instead of making the change on the original, make a copy. And in this case, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to say, make a copy. You see that there is now a second copy of the image right on top of the first one. And with the black arrow, all I have to do is click, hold the shift, slide it over, and uh, there are my two, um, in this case, um, eyeballs for my alien that are perfectly the same size and that same angles. So making a copy is often a very, very useful um, thing to do. Here's another example of that. Again, I'll make a star. <clears throat> and this can be uh, pretty neat. Uh, I'm going to uh, make essentially a shadow of my star. Okay, And I'm going to go back to that reflection tool um, over here. I use the, the um, no, not the reflection, I'm sorry. I want to use the shearing tool. The shearing tool. Okay. So um, here, again, I could either do it manually, um, and uh, but I want to duplicate the object. Okay. So again, I'll use the dialog box method. I'll just double click the tool. It gives me uh, my, my object here. And um, here you see what it will do if I apply it to the original. There you go. All right. Um, but um, I want to, as a matter of fact, let's, uh, I want to, uh, let's see, 34. Okay. And instead of applying that to the original, I'm going to say, again, make a copy. And there I have um, a second copy of it. I'm going to give it a very light color. Um, I will say, um, uh, send it uh, to the back. And I can just move it. And for instance, 
um, there might be what essentially looks like a shadow of my star very quickly and easily. So we can either use the manual method, which is um, two steps, click and then drag, or we can go under Object, uh, Transform, and pull up the dialog box, or we can double click the tool, um, double click the tool, and uh, bring up the dialog box um, as well. So uh, there you have it, and um, here is your dialog box.